What does America, the Philippines, Korea, and Japan have in common that the rest of the world doesn't? And it's probably useful for you to know this if you end up sailing there. It might be a bit far for dinghy cruising from here to America, but you should know this, and I'll give you the answer later. It's Paul and we've come back down to Wonderland with the Sydney Ray Group and this time I think we're going to have six or seven boats hopefully. It has been raining all night long uh, but it has stopped and there is a little bit of blue sky. We're planning on going up the lake and probably staying at uh, Point Wilson Craft or Paul Bar depending. People I haven't met before so that's great and different boats as well so it should be good. And Gwondolan is on the southern part of Lake Macquarie, which is about two and a half hours north of Sydney. Here's Trevor and his dad who built the Taminori. Uh, good to see you, Trevor. I haven't seen you in about, what, nine months probably? Right, yeah, about that. Like my lakes when it was yeah, the last one, so. Yeah, Because yeah. Trev, Trev moved from here up to Port Macquarie. And yeah. today we've got two Taminoris. And this is the other Taminori called Hentz owned by Dave. Hi there. Tell us about your boat, Dave. This one's about 10 years old. It was made in the rule by a gentleman called Dave Birch. Right. And um, he kindly passed it on to me. And pretty new early days yet, but we're getting used to it. It's a great little boat. Yes, it's in good nick. When I did the raid, it's uh, my lake. Yeah. I had all the stuff, including timber, in it. Rick and I went sailing. Yeah. I had a little hold back here where I could fit, <laughs> scampering over the top. So this is Mark with the Paradox, of which there are only four in Australia. An interesting boat. So have you had a long, Mark? About five months. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, in, uh, it was in reasonable condition when I got it, but I've done a bit of roof hitting out. Yeah, yeah. This is why you're not bothered about the rain. No, <laughs> you never get wet. There's a complete set of wet weather gear on board and I've never, never used it. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Uh, there's a toilet stored under the back. So who designed the Paradox? It's uh, an American designer, Matt Vaden. Right. And this, this was about, I think, the third or the fourth in a... A series of boats like this he built. Yeah. And it's the only one which you can get plans for. Wow. He went on to design two smaller ones. Uh, smaller? The, smaller. The Enigma, which is about a foot shorter and about half the weight. And, uh, and he finished off with a... I can't remember the name of the last one. It was a car topper. You've got solar, you've got everything. Yeah. This is incredible. If the boat has a weakness, it's tacking. Yeah, yeah, mine uh, doesn't tack too well. Hey, hey, hey. Mark. Mark. Don't mind about a sticky boot? Yeah, yeah. So if you're ever slowly uh, not coming out of a tack, I just press the button. Yeah, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> but don't tell anybody. <laughs> this is Chris, and he's got what looks like a sailing canoe, which he built himself. This is a combi canoe designed by Michael Storer. Oh, so Michael Storer. designed Storia. to be both good paddling canoe as a, a traditional open canoe but also quite a reasonable sailing boat so it's a little broader and flatter in the rear which yeah. makes it a little bit better for sailing. Did it take you long to build? So it was about three months not, well, not working too hard. That's pretty fast. Yeah. Blimey. Yeah, so there's, it's a stitch of glue construction and yeah, I've been quite happy with it. It's, it's got a lee board on one side, yeah. yeah. And then has a rudder on the back so it's set up for a nice conventional yeah, sort of yeah. Paradox. 
So, have you actually been over in it? Oh, many times. <laughs> Sometimes I'm pushing the envelope a bit. Yeah. Um, but a couple of times it's dumped me when I've... Well, if you get a sudden gust, it's hard to react quick enough. So this is Chris and he's just turned up with his uh, beautiful looking boat that was built in Signet in Tasmania. So you've converted it from a lug sail to a gaff? Gaff rig, correct. And a tabernacle on it to make it easier to um, rig the mast. New set of sails. Wow. Added a few camp, bit of camping gear, made a few modifications to hopefully make it a bit new centreboard, heavier centreboard. Because it needed a bit of ballast, didn't it? It was very light, yeah. It was very tender, the boat. So yeah. I put a, a stainless steel, new stainless steel centreboard on it. And this is your maiden overnight dinghy cruise. Hopefully. Hopefully it's not going to rain. <laughs> it's not going to rain. Hopefully my my tent stands up to the the uh, the rigors, the rigors of, <laughs> yes. of dinghy cruising. Oh, well, we'll find out. There's only one way. I know. Well, this is a very experimental for me, so we'll see how it all goes. <laughs> Good on you. So tell me about your ballast. You haven't got a centerboard. No, there's no centerboard. Uh, there's 200 kilograms of lead on the inside. Wow. Plus uh, 70 litres of water, which is about 75 kilograms of water ballast as well. So. Have you ever been over? I've been trying for several weeks to make it go over. <laughs> and I got it at the mast just to touch the water for about two seconds last weekend. And then it came it, off? It, it, was up within a second. It, it was really hard and a big gust to get it to go over. Wow. No, nothing reefed. It, it's very stable. But... I like that concept of I've been trying to. <laughs> yeah, you don't hear that very often, do you? <laughs> no. That's handy, that's such a good thing. Even Now I'm only filming this in case you get a little bit wet, but I can grab the bow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good bit of breeze. It's nice to have some consistent breeze compared to sailing on Lake Burley Griffin. You can't sail on Lake Burley Griffin, that's a pond. So yes, we are off sailing again. Uh, it's turning out to be a beautiful day. The rain has completely gone and it's sunny blue skies and probably three to five knots or something. We've got a great collection of boats. I think there's six or seven. There's a few more coming this afternoon. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. It took us about an hour to rig everybody up and get in the water. But uh, that's okay. Is there a plan for today? Well, we're going to go up to Wanji Wanji Caravan Park for lunch and then head back, which is not very far, around the other side of Paul Bar Island to um, a Point Wollstonecraft. He's not looking where he's going. <laughs>
beautiful day. proving to be an excellent day. The weather is really nice. It rained all night and I was really worried we weren't going to make it today. Earlier, I asked you what the Americas, the Philippines, Japan and Korea had in common that the rest of the world doesn't. Well, in America they have a saying, red right returning. And that means on returning to port, the starboard marker as we know it is red, not green. And therefore the port marker must be green. Confusing, eh? Well, it would be if you were sailing from one region to another. And that all came about because in the 70s there were a series of merchant ship disasters in the English Channel with collisions. And in 1980, they decided to reduce the 30 different voyage marking systems from around the world to just two, Region A and Region B. And the Americas, Philippines, Korea and Japan are Region B, and the rest of the world is Region A. And Australia is in Region A. So our starboard marker is green, not red. Well, we're all going along quite nicely. It's probably anything from five to eight knots. Probably you do get a few, few gusts, which are interesting. But so uh, the good thing is we're managing to stay quite close together, which isn't always the case, but it makes it a lot more fun when you do. And up ahead, Rick and his Drascom longboat joined us. So we all made it, gentlemen, and no one got wet? I got wet. Oh, you got wet? Oh. Very wet toes. I got splashed at one I did see a bit of bailing action going on. <laughs> you know that little bit of leftover tent gear you left at... Uh, oh, yeah. I've taken it to Queensland and back. Oh, good. Hang on. Did you enjoy the trip? And, and I've got it in the boat, so it doesn't let me forget, mate. So lunch here at Wanji Wanji Point Caravan Park. There was a brief shower of rain, it lasted about three or four minutes, and it's cleared, and the sun's come out again. So this is uh, Chris's boat. Very nice uh, lunch stop there at Wanji Wanji Caravan Park. The wind's dropped a bit this afternoon. It's probably only down to like three knots now, maybe. But uh, we're running all the way down, so it's good. Beautiful. You would not believe how much rain we've had. Looking at the skies today, unbelievable. And I just want to say thank you to all those viewers from overseas that watch the channel and leave nice comments. Um, and I wonder if I can ask you to do me a favor. Can you send me a picture of your boat? Uh, there's a lot of people watching around the world and everyone likes to look at other people's boats. If you've got a boat and want to send me a picture, 
send it to sailingkatelouise at gmail.com and I'll put it in a video. Thank you very much. said the wind drops, probably a bit premature because it's howling through here. It's a good 10 to 12 knots coming through here now between the islands and the mainland. A few white caps forming. Everyone seems to be all right at the moment, which is good. So I should really be putting a reef in. So Bruce and his O'Day day sailor just joined us. He lives up around here, so uh, <laughs> Bruce never reefs. Um, he just goes one way, and that's flat out. Um, he's a really good sailor, though. <laughs> it's about 17 or 18 feet long. Uh, very stiff, very heavy. Goes like the clappers. The wind has come up a bit. Some interesting gusts through here. Uh, it's good fun though. Yeah, well, in the States they still race them. They've got a huge, yeah, a huge following over there. Yeah. Yeah. This sort of rolls into the V and it goes down. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but a uh, full two bone steak and vegetables. Oh, don't. <laughs> and I forgot to put my ice cream in the thing up the front. I was going to have ice creams too. I think you're just rubbing it in now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we have certain standards and, and that's not it. <laughs> it was beautifully made but built for people that were a lot skinnier than I was. And I just sort of hung around, hung over the edges. Yeah. But I found a 20 millimetre gym mat and uh, I, I think it'll be a lot, a lot more comfortable. Given it hell, and uh, the, the nut came off the bottom <laughs> of, the, of the thing, disappeared into the main sewer, you know. <laughs> and the other thing I realised is that in an 80 centimetre pipe, my elbow won't fit it down. It. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, but a little bit fancy because we were sort of side on. Anyway, the sun's come up. Now the wind is meant to be 15 to 20 knots today. It's uh, gone up a bit on what was originally expected. So it could be an interesting run back. Anyway, have a coffee, warm up a bit, and all will be good. John's got one, Peter Green's got one. I'm talking about uh, anchor buddies. 
So time for breakfast. I'm going to have another gourmet scrambled egg breakfast. And this time hopefully I won't forget the mushrooms. So we've got some spinach, mushrooms, tomatoes and onions. This is just a bit of oil. Don't bring any butter. I don't think we'll be having lunch. There's enough here for an army. So there we are, scrambled eggs with spinach, tomatoes, and this time mushrooms, onions. I think it's just about ready. Mm, very good. Everything is original. I've strengthened the transom work for the outboard bracket. I've uh, converted the rig from a lug sail to a gaff rig. Oh, yeah. Um, which enabled me to get it a little bit higher up and a bit more efficient. New sails, or new sails. Wow. Got Barracuda sails, Tarrant Point. And then uh, I updated the centerboard. The original centerboard plate was probably about four millimeters and it was very. Um, not very heavy. Yeah. So I now have a eight millimeter thick stainless steel centerboard that weighs 29 kilos. Wow. In addition to that, down in the bilges, there's also um, lead ballast. Yeah. There are uh, one, two, three, four lead ballasts, each weighing about four and a half, five kilos. I'm still trying to get my head around the scale of the boat as you're standing up, and <laughs> it's almost <laughs> as long as you. It's the biggest small boat around, I reckon. Yeah. I was just giving a demonstration earlier about how tippy it is initially. I can actually just lean it over and that's wow. sailing upwind angle. Pretty much as far as it goes too. Next time, Mark. So Chris is heading off. He's got to head back to Canberra. <laughs> so what did you say, Bruce? So I'm going to the soft option. We're just the reef main today. Do you hear that, guys? Bruce is going to put a reef in. <laughs> So Bruce has got to head back that way to Summerland Point. Yes, not only has Bruce put a reef in, Dave, he's also put wet weather gear on. So that should tell you something about the breeze. I think we're just going to fly back here. It's probably a good 15 knots, I'd say now. There are white caps on the water. Are you all good? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna, just gonna go with this little jig. I actually think the wind's dropping down this end of the lake. It's definitely dropping. Quite a few people ask what the uh, flag is. Well, it's uh, a red and yellow. It's a code R, a marine code. And uh, as we're a Sydney raid sailing group, uh, we've adopted the R flag. So that's what it is. It's an R, the maritime code flags.
anyway, we had a great overnight stay uh, up at Lake Macquarie and the seven boats turned up. Thank you everyone for coming and we'll see you somewhere on the water next time.